Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. Just finished a great day of evangelism. And uh, off home. Just got everything in the car. Uh, packed everything. And uh, just one or two things I, I wanted to talk about. Um, okay. tired it's been a good day basically been out today I was out about quarter past nine in town and, uh, <coughs> really um, I was there because I didn't want the buskers to take our space you know um, I just want to talk about the Jewish people first. Sorry about this. My view on the Jewish people is that God has a plan for the Jewish people, that they're, uh, if you read Romans 9, 10 and 11, that they're going to be engrafted in believe there's going to be a great revival. My position is, is basically that of Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones on the Jews and I say that because uh, I, I am reformed in my theology. Sometimes the reformed are accused of not having uh, a love for the Jewish people and um, that's not true. If you look at Reformed theology, uh, if you look at Mary McShane, and uh, go back even to the Westminster Confession and study John Lightfoot, a uh, great theologian, wrote a number of commentaries based on rabbinic literature. Um, and uh, so, if anybody hears that I'm a Calvinist. Please remember that I have a love for the Jewish people and I believe that they will be engrafted in. <clears throat> I want to say also that I don't like to be dogmatic. You know, um, And I don't like to identify with labels, really. I don't like to be called a Calvinist, really. I don't like to be called reformed. I just prefer, personally, to be a believer in Christ. And when I look at other believers who might perhaps don't see the same to me, we're all one in Christ. So I don't like using labels like charismatic or Calvinist or Arminian, really. And I think sometimes we label each other but I do think that sometimes we're, we're more closer than we actually realise. Um, so those are my, that's my opinion, that's my view. I'm kind of really delighted really with uh, Donald Trump at the moment with signing the free speech for religion. I think that's absolutely amazing, awesome. Forgive me if my ears are mess. And uh, I think that's amazing, really, that we've got free speech in America through Donald Trump. I just think that's amazing, really. We need it here, as one friend said. So that's really encouraging. Sorry about this. So... <laughs> Excuse me. Um, reading um, N.T. Wright's Resurrection and the Son of God. Uh, Amazing book. 
I don't normally agree with N.T. Wright, but I think it's an amazing book, very scholarly. He's looking at um, the word resurrection in the ancient world, and he's been looking at Homer and Plato, and uh, the ancient world and the other ancient religions didn't believe in a physical resurrection. Some scholars try to say they did, but uh, N.T. Wright shows a lot of evidence from Homer and Plato to show categorically that these ideas are unique to Christianity. So I thought that was interesting. I'm also reading a book on Islam. Fantastic book. Uh, and basically this book, it took 20 years to, to do. Uh, I think it's called Imar, Dr. Imar, I think it is. I think it's in the light of Islam or something like that. And it's really excellent. It looks at the history of um, Islam and it points out a, a lot of things that people don't know that Zoroastrianism and the many other religions, actually pe people in uh, Muhammad's um, converts and um, people in his family deeply embedded in other religions so he got their like his ideas from them like the way they pray and various rituals I found it fascinating I absolutely found it fascinating I uh, I got through the PhD with Adol Schlatter well nearly through the ne nearly finished it and uh, it was interesting really I don't fully agree with him He's kind of looking at the incarnation from a relational point of view that the Lord kind of wanted to obey the Father and Slat is saying we should look at it functionally as how he obeying the Father. I think it's brilliant, I think there's a lot to be said for that, there's a lot of scripture that advocates that, but I do think that it's important also to stress the ontological side of the incarnation. What that means is not just the relational aspect of how he relates to the Father, but what's his actual being. And you get that ontology means being. So when he says in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and the Word was God, that's ontology, that's looking at the being. But I do think Schlatter is correct in being careful not to get yourself tied down with ontology because we can't fully understand the incarnation. I think he's wise. But I think if you follow his step to just being uh, relational in your studying of the incarnation, you know, texts like uh, when the Father says, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased, and Jesus says, glorify yourself with the glory that we had in the beginning. This kind of relational language. So there is that there, but it's dangerous if you just follow that and not emphasize the ontological. That's why I think Athanasius was a genius. Athanasius knew where the battle lines were and he knew that it was important to make an ontological, i.e. a statement about the being of God. Otherwise, you're gonna be in trouble. I think he was wise and, uh, you know, I think uh, nobody was as great as Athanasius as a theologian in terms of the incarnation. So that's it really, folks. Had an absolutely amazing week of evangelism. Two good, three good days with the table, had a great day with the table today. It's just been awesome. You know, a couple of lady came with us today and she's been great and she said two people give the heart to the Lord so you know the Lord's been good it's been a good day and good times and uh, just encouraged you know it's just encouraging so coming home now so God bless you all oh, what a day it's been a busy day been a busy day.